So the first thing I'll show is, um, well, this is the documentation, which isn't exciting, but um, is useful. So um, service monitors or pollers or whatever you want to call them, uh, sometimes it's helpful or required or necessary to um, use authentication or other things about a specific node or interface um, in the parameters for that particular monitor and there wasn't really a good way to do that so I set about fixing that and um, implemented it in a bunch of different um, monitors that I thought made sense and these are that's the list of things you can um, embed in curly braces in a parameter value and each of the monitors tells you which parameters it'll actually um, look for those and and do things with. So probably the most common one is the HTTP monitor and its friends um, where it's definitely turned on for basic authentication as well as like the user password um, I think even like user agent and a couple other things. If anyone has any wish list it's really easy to change it to include more things so um, feel free to bother me about that. Um, but yeah, it works for HTTP. Um, I had a list somewhere. Not anymore. Um, JSIFs, I think. Yep. JDBC and the other two JDBC things. Uh, I think JMX already had something. No, I think I, I don't remember. Anyway. Um, ah, Jalokia, that's the one I did. I didn't do regular JMX. Um, LDAP, WS Man, the WS Man, it supports the, uh, the rule parameter, which seemed to be the only thing that made sense for, um, potentially being, uh, wanting to use it to change it at runtime, so, um, or per node. So anyway, I have a demo, um, so I just created a <coughs> uh, HTTP auth service that's just, it's just a page that's got auth on it, um, basic auth on it, and uh, right now it works, but if I, this is going to definitely need to be bigger. Where is the end of my window? And did it freeze? No. I bet I lost it when the uh, wireless reset. Cool, I got a different IP address. <laughs> That's it. 145, So I'll change the password on there to something else like that. And. This is going to be fun. I mean, this is probably going to break, but we'll see what happens. Yeah. All right, so it's already down, and I will change the uh, asset data. Yeah, well, you know. Well, that would have been better, but, you know. <coughs> Farts is fat, show a lot less characters. So now, well, now I changed it to 15 seconds, so it should be. Well, I don't know, actually, know that's the downtime model, so whatever. 
whatever that is, but I, I assure you it will come back up. Um, but anyway, it's, I mean, it's nice on a couple levels. A, you can have the same service use different credentials, and B, you can actually change these parameters without having to restart OpenNMS because it's yeah. polars. Nice. So, anyway. Um, Where did you put that on the Yeah, so I'll show you. Yeah, so it, it just, yeah. In, this, in the demo case, you put it in the asset. Yeah, but it can also be like IP address or, you know, no node ID, no label, foreign ID, so foreign source. Right, so um, I'll show you the config file too. So in this case, I just I'm only using user user and password, and they're just set to username and password and curly braces. So it pulls it from the node attributes for from this particular node. Um, so that way you can run the same the same monitor on thirteen different nodes with different credentials, and you don't have to create, you don't have to create thirteen oh, yeah. services. Yeah. So yeah. an example I can use this for um, <coughs> to base URL, like, yeah. like I might have a, yep. uh, an Apache that's Absolutely. Some web servers. Yep, so URL is a parameter that supports it. So I could, that would be easy. So if I have a particular node, I can go into the provision of requisition. I can ad hoc add HTTP-TARS, HTTP-QSTIS, HTTP-OpenMS. Right. And then I can go into the service parameters for each one of those. But URL is www.tars.io. Usage.com, org. Right, yeah. And then those monitors would automatically do that, and I won't have to worry about configuring. I can configure. You can, it's a fairly I'm static. I one service here. I can figure that out. I can do virtual host. I mean, yeah. I just keep one service in the polar configuration. Or at least, at least drastically smaller sets of services. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the one thing that I did, and one reason why I didn't like just let you do it on any particular parameter you wanted to, was I didn't really want to encourage people putting garbage in the asset table. Yep. Um, <laughs> so, um, so uh, yeah, th th that are, there's going to be some conflict there because certainly there's more things in the world than there are asset fields, um, and that's you know something that we've all lived with forever, and someday we'll have a solution to it. But, um, but yeah, it, at least solves some cases. So, should be useful. Um, the other thing I worked on the rest of the week was trying to um, get flows to install using only Chef, which I didn't quite finish, but I got close. Um, so, for those of you who have never experienced Chef, it's just a configuration management um, tool like Puppet or Ansible or Salt or whatever the kids are using these days. Um, but it uses food metaphors, so I thought it'd be easier to teach my coworkers. Um, <laughs> so um, anyway, so there's um, I set up a uh, I'll do this on the bigger. Nope, that's not bigger. Uh, I set up a, a variety of um, cookbooks and recipes that. Um, installs uh, enough of Elasticsearch and uh, Helm and Grafana and um, OpenNMS, obviously, to um, get it all configured and um, working without having to like think about anything. So um, it got to the point where I can see the little button to take you to the flows, but um, I don't actually have any flow data, and I don't know why because I installed this. HS flow daemon and seems like it's working, but Elasticsearch doesn't have any data in it. But anyway, so that was kind of a fun exercise and nice to see. But anyway, um, that'll be cool to see once um, more of these things get into production and stuff. So um, generically, I also added um, support for 22. Uh, I don't, haven't released it yet to the Chef uh, Cookbook repo thing in the sky. Um, and added a resource for defining pull outages um, with a chef resource. So you don't have to do it in the web UI if you don't want to. Um, yeah. Questions on either thing? Passwords aren't encrypted. No. That's, but they aren't. I mean, they never have been. Um, I talked, Jesse and I talked about it a little bit, like, generically, it'd be nice to have some sort of, like, well, he started a metadata thing a while back um, that I'll try to take a look at someday. Um, 
that is sort of an extension to the node asset tables. Um, and then to take that even further it would be nice to like integrate with an existing secrets management thing like Vault or whatever, mm -hmm. um, so that you could access <coughs> secrets for a particular interface um, inside the OpenNMS things. I'd, there's lots of places where that'd be helpful, especially because like you know this is a single username and password. Well, there's lots of different services that can run on a specific interface, so maybe they have different usernames and passwords, and so it becomes an issue there. But you know, walk before we run, basically.